Thousands of miles of vast fertile soil, the land of abundance. This was the praise of Sichuan from the intelligent and legendary Zhuge Liang in Chinese history, which brought this cradle of the ancient Sichuan culture, both at home and abroad, the reputation as the land of abundance. This hidden wonderland with lofty and precipitous peaks, famous mountains, eminent temples, and rare birds and beasts increasing the mysterious character of the land is listed among world heritage sites, which have become world-renowned one after another. Among them, a particular interest is the giant panda nature reserve located in the Wulong Special Administration region of Sichuan province. The endangered panda draws admiration, the same as the great scenic view. For many years, stories about the love between humans and animals have been interlaced into the legend of pandas in Wulong, the land of abundance. The Legend of Pandas. The endless river flows eastward, with its huge waves have gone all those gallant heroes of bygone years. The historical figures intoned by the literature Sandongbo of the Song Dynasty are heroes of the Three Kingdoms period. Nearly 2,000 years ago, in the last days of the Eastern Han Dynasty, China was divided into Cao Wei, Shu Han, and Eastern Wu Dynasties, thus beginning the Three Kingdoms period of rocks piling up into the clouds, the shore struck by fierce waves. In the troubled times of infighting among warlords, Liu Bei, with the weakest military strength, visited Zhuge Liang in person three times, until Zhuge Liang, the wise and courageous counselor, agreed to assist Liu Bei in proclaiming himself emperor of Sichuan in southwest China, building up the power of Xu Han and establishing a tripartite with Cao Cao and Su Quan. It was said that Zhuge Liang used to farm and read in Wulonggang, so he named himself Mr. Wulong. This outstanding statesman and strategist became legendary for his skills in controlling the forces of nature in Liu Guangzhong's novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Compared to the emperor, Liu Bei, the prime minister, Zhu Ge Liang, who ran the country and cared for the people, gained much popularity and respect among the Sichuan people. The three visits waited him with affairs of the state, and to two generations, he gave his true heart. He died before he could ever conquer, for which heroes have drenched their coats and tears ever since. 
This well-known quote from Dr. Fu of the Tang Dynasty tells of the desolation of Zhuge Liang's death in military service after assisting two generations of royalties in governing Shu Han and fighting for supremacy. By devoting his whole life to Shu Han until his death, Zhuge Liang became a model of allegiance for later generations. After the death of Zhuge Liang, the great fight of the Shu Han for hegemony in China was left unfinished and unavoidably destroyed by Cao Wei in the end. With Cao Wei and Sun Wu overthrown by the newly rising Jin Dynasty, the once grandiose dramatic Three Kingdoms period was brought to an end. The stories of heroes melted in the long history of China along with the river. All traces of weapons and conquering warriors were washed away by the green waves, and one can only roam through the ancient realms in one's own mind. The land remains picturesque, and the pure soil of this paradise on earth has returned to serenity. Time has flown more than 1,000 years later to the modern age, like a torrential mountain stream. Walking into Wolong Town today, located in northwestern Sichuan, without any imperial treasures, the only evidence that the locals remember of Mr. Wolong, the famous prime minister of Shuhan, is the name of the place. Wolong Town is located in Aba, Tibetan, and Chang Autonomous Prefecture, where the Chang people stand aloof from world affairs, following a lifestyle in sync with the sunrise and sunset. The famous hand embroidery done by the skilled Chang women is still exquisite. They embroider colorful nature scenes on their clothing, which increases the unique ethnicity of this modest land. The population of this small town is less than 3,000. People living here are willing to keep their population numbers very low to return this vast land to nature and give up the most pristine areas to the more disadvantaged and rare wild animals. There are 56 species of key nationally protected rare and endangered animals in the Wolong Nature Reserve, which is like a treasure house of genes. The Tibetan macaques, also named the Chinese stump-tailed macaques, look similar to the Formosan rock macaques, striking a familiar note with the visitors from across the Taiwan Strait. Actually, these two species of macaques, thousands of miles away from each other, have a common ancestor. They were forcibly separated for survival until the Ice Age about 40,000 years ago. The treatment that the macaques enjoy is an awakening from the tragedy of history. Like the old saying, the blood of the soldiers makes the glory of the general. In the past, people pursued fame and fortune, while which were also gone along with the riptide of time. Ecological crisis came with the expansion of civilization, forcing humans to become open-minded, sympathetically retreating from the wild mountains and working for the benefit of other living creatures. A great ecological engineering project was quietly carried out in 1963. With great efforts, the natural habitat of the giant pandas was protected, and the population of wild giant pandas began to rebound. There are almost 150 pandas living in the Wolong Reserve, nearly one-tenth of the total in China. These 
efforts have preserved a unique rare species that will last forever and have written a great page in human history. Hailed as a national treasure, the giant panda, being more famous than other species of rare animals, makes the nature reserve primarily a giant panda reserve. In this faraway mysterious land, researchers set up a nursery school so panda babies, less than one year old, could enjoy a carefree childhood in an extremely safe environment. There is not much difference between the nursery school for panda cubs and human children. Panda cubs enjoy nutritious milk and snacks under the care of full-time feeders. Feeders clean and care for the health of the panda cubs after they finish their meals. Like ordinary human children, Panda cubs often show affection towards the feeders. The difference is that children have to learn various scholastic lessons while the daily schoolwork for panda cubs is simply playing. Feeders rack their brains to design many kinds of playthings for cubs to climb on as much as they can. They strengthen their physical ability through sufficient exercise and learn social skills through group games. Healthy male and female babies, Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan, are special. They were chosen to fly across the Taiwan Strait at the end of 2008 as ambassadors of diplomacy. The panda draft began in 2005 and became a popular topic around the world, both in Taiwan and mainland China. The draft base in the remote mountains was suddenly in the spotlight, capturing the close attention of the world. Nature Reserve, highly reputed as the hometown of the giant pandas, cooperated with the World Wildlife Fund in 1980 to set up the China Giant Panda Protection and Research Center, or the Wulong Base for short. There are almost 100 captive breeding giant pandas in the center more than half of the total number in China.
it is easier to climb heaven than take the Sichuan Road. Above, high peaks turn back the sun's chariot drawn by six dragons. Below, the charging waves are caught in whirlpools. Not even yellow cranes dare fly this way, and monkeys cannot climb over those gorges. These are excellent descriptions by the famous poet Li Bai of the natural barriers in the land of Sichuan. The giant panda reserve is located in the high mountains and valley of the east foothills of the Chonglai Mountains, with the highest peak measuring over 6,000 meters above sea level. The research center is isolated from the highway on the opposite shore by the rapid flowing Mean River, connected to the mundane world by only a bridge. Visitors have to disinfect the soles of their shoes to protect the health of the pandas before entering the giant panda park. More than 60 researchers live in enclosed life voluntarily here, taking charge of reproducing the giant panda. Although not as famous as Heroes of the Three Kingdoms period, they're anonymous heroes who resolve their minds for the sake of the universe and arrange their life for the sake of the population. In addition to its most charming, innocent appearance, the giant panda is precious for its important biological significance. The giant panda is also a so-called living animal fossil. Their primogenitor appeared millions of years ago and was carnivorous. They adapted to live on bamboo after long-term evolution. Tens of thousands of years ago, the giant panda used to inhabit the area south of the Yangtze River. The mass number of giant pandas made them sources of meat and fur, and they were widely hunted by humans in the ancient times. Many ancient creatures flourished in the central plains of China, where the giant pandas had already died out, leaving only a few giant pandas and other rare species to struggle into modern times. However, it is hard to avoid the hunting activities of human beings and the destruction of their habitats by humans. Only 1,600 giant pandas are now left in the world, charged with the survival of their race. The giant pandas survived by living in deep mountains scattered across southern Shanxi, Gansu, and Sichuan. More than 80% of them live in Sichuan. What exactly does a panda look like? A bear or a cat? According to researchers, the Qingling giant panda has a round head that looks like a cat. While the Sichuan giant panda in Wulong has a head that looks like a bear. These two families differentiated genetically during evolution and formed two subspecies. The population of the Qingling giant panda is fewer, with brown ventral seta and a cute profile, and is called the beauty in the national treasure. The female panda, Yuan Yuan, chosen as a gift to Taiwan, is a combination of the two different families with black and brownish fur. It is distinctive from others and is the belle of the pandas of the same age. Bear cat or cat bear? It is a difficult decision to make and has been haggled over for many years. Since experts cannot agree on the biological classification of the giant panda, it has been subsumed as Ileropoda, which has finally settled the dispute. Since ancient times, the giant panda has been called various names. 
It is said that giant pandas used to go into people's households and chew iron pans, which garnered them the title of iron chewers. It is quite difficult to tell an authentic legend from an invented one. However, it is a concrete fact that pandas have strong molar teeth, which enable them to live on the tough fargasia or bamboo and never get tired of it. According to biologists, the giant panda has unusual paws with an extra thumb along with its five fingers. The thumb is actually a modified sesamoid bone, which helps the panda to hold bamboo when eating. The green swaying bamboo forest is representative of the China landscape. The panda fever in recent years makes the giant panda synonymous with China. The perfect combination of pandas and bamboo constitutes a vivid image of China. The giant panda family chose to live in Sichuan because of the humid climate and the broad bamboo forests here. The evergreen bamboo ensures sufficient food for the pandas. The captive breeding giant pandas at the base have no chance to get out and see the bamboo scenery. Feeders make great efforts to feed the giant pandas a natural bamboo diet in place of the efforts wild pandas have to make to look for food. In addition to satisfying their appetite, the bamboo sent into the panda park by trucks have to be disinfected to protect the health of the pandas. The pandas like the pith of the bamboo shoots and the bamboo shoots, as well as the leaves. It seems that pandas spend most of their time eating. However, the time that food takes to pass through their intestines is short as a result of their short intestines. So, even though pandas eat many pounds of bamboo, they can only digest and absorb less than 20% of it. Therefore, it takes them about 10 hours every day to receive adequate nutrition. workers use their imagination to provide captive giant pandas with rich nutriments. They combine neutrology with the unique features of Chinese delicacies to make nutritious and convenient dumplings that taste good. Tough bamboo stalks are grounded into fragments with machines and milled into powder combined with soybeans, corn, and grains to make the farina which is added to the dumplings. Integrated farina with ground bamboo stalks mixed with eggs and seed oil makes them worthy of being called nutritious dumplings. pinch the well-mixed materials into clumps of dough of equal size and steam them. They are the essential delicacy of giant pandas each day.
the giant pandas, growing up with a Sichuan dialect, understand the orders from the feeders. They are accustomed to hand feeding. They are well trained to stay in line with the discipline to wait their turn to enjoy their milk starter. After they finish their milk starters, the feeders give out dumplings in turn as the main course. and dumpling meals, vegetables at afternoon tea time, and six bamboo meals provide sufficient nutrition to the giant pandas each day. This is also the best formula to meet their dietary requirements based on the long-term experience of the researchers. What about the giant panda's reaction to the recipes carefully made by nutritionists? We can get the answer from the posture of the giant pandas lying on their backs when they are eating. We can also feel the panda's contentment with their comfortable life. While bamboo is tasteless to human beings, it is delicious to the pandas as they chew and relish it. It can be clearly seen that animals are easier to satisfy than human beings. Maybe it is this simple, easy comfort and fulfillment of the giant pandas that strikes a happy chord with humans. And this is why people can always rediscover pure joy and laugh heartily when viewing the panda. The captive breeding giant panda in the park seems lazy, but it is in good physical condition. The medical benefits are perfect with full-time veterinarians driving away parasites for them. Not unlike domestic cats, the excellent living conditions plus satisfying easy life also brings the danger of becoming overweight to these pandas living in privilege. Compared with their wild counterparts, captive pandas tend to be heavier and have chubbier shapes. Exercise and bodybuilding are important to both humans and animals. There is a wide stretch of playground outside the panda's bedroom in the park. High and low rockworks, wooden supports, and pools are put in the playground to allow pandas to practice their climbing skills. Despite their chubby shapes and innocent looks, pandas are extremely agile. Wild giant pandas are especially agile, and they can climb up a tree fast when in danger. Climbing upward to avoid danger is the natural instinct of pandas. Even though the living conditions are absolutely safe, captive pandas still long to climb to high places. People are always impressed by their climbing skills, especially their ability to hang their huge bodies high up in the sky and sleep. Another indefatigable game for pandas is wrestling. Besides sleeping and eating, pandas fight foot to foot just like they're training to do martial arts.
The connection of pandas and martial arts masters is more than the romantic imagery of a Hollywood movie. The stories of the Kung Fu Panda can actually be traced in history. Besides the pandas, Chinese Kung Fu is one of the best attractions to be found in this beautiful yet mysterious scenery. The renowned martial arts disciplines such as Omei and Ching Chung that are often portrayed in the Kung Fu novels are based in Sichuan. When the martial arts masters, with graceful and agile movements, like dragons and birds flying around, moved freely and nimbly in mountains and forests, they might have encountered the giant panda by accident and been amazed by the giant panda's graceful posture when moving through trees and bamboo forests and wrestling and fighting with each other. The scene might have inspired them to transform the movements of giant pandas to fist positions and martial art moves. Giant Eagle and Its Companion is one of the most loved novels in a series of works by Jin Yong, the Chinese contemporary champion of Kung Fu novelists. In this emotional love story, the heroine, Xiaolong Nu, is unsociable and imprisons herself in the remote mountains to practice her martial arts skills. She is indifferent to romance until she meets Yang Guo. They become romantically involved and that dictates their lives. Narcissistic females like Xiaolong Nu are no strangers to panda experts at the Wolong base. Although honest and innocent looking, mature pandas are in fact withdrawn and need their own personal space. The estrous cycle of the female panda is short and they are very critical of their sexual partners. Unless the male and female pandas have an affinity for each other, any matchmaking by others will not do any good and could even lead to fighting, ending up in a breakup. cycle of the wild panda is only a few days every year. They give birth to one to two cubs every time. Their low fertility rate makes it difficult to propagate the species. After mating, female pandas raise the cubs by themselves. During this period, Female pandas have to go unavoidably out to find food to produce enough milk to foster the offspring. Since it takes a long time for them to eat, they have to leave their cubs in their lair alone for more than half a day. People in the past did not quite understand the habits of pandas, so they asserted that the panda mothers abandoned their babies and labeled them irresponsible mothers. Through field study, researchers disproved this assertion and panda mothers were exonerated. With rich nutrition, captive female pandas mature fast. They become sexually active at three years old, which is three years earlier than wild pandas. Although they are physically mature, the sexual impulses and activity do not necessarily begin right away. 
possibly because of the good living conditions and less pressure to continue the family bloodline, spontaneous sexual desire of the female pandas is lower. Amorism and bringing up children are family affairs that others should not get involved in. However, experts must do something to help continue the panda species. Researchers at the Wulong base trying to help female pandas conceive utilizing artificial fertilization. With diligence and patience, they finally overcame obstacles to artificial propagation and have facilitated the birth of healthy panda cubs. The gestation period of captive pandas ranges from three months to half a year, with a record of 10 months. Because the reproductive capacity of female pandas degrades, some cubs are premature infants. Some panda mothers even consider the fetus a monster and refuse to mother it. In this situation, experts have a duty to artificially nurse and babysit to bring up panda cubs. Panda cubs are eventually returned to the panda mothers for more natural rearing. Because of the degradation of their reproductive capacity, more than 90% of the pandas reproduce by artificial fertilization, and they know nothing of natural mating. Experts have tried many ways to provoke pandas to increase their fertility, including putting female and male pandas in a room and showing sex videotapes to stimulate the development of sexual organs and the desire to mate. Successful natural mating happens once in a while. To ensure the pair of pandas being sent to Taiwan can have babies, feeders at the Wolong base made great efforts to select the pair, Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan, from various candidates after testing. The pair also received sex education from experts to enhance their sexuality after marriage. In Jinyong's story, Yang Guo finally wins Xiaolong Niu's heart. The lively and amorous Tuan Tuan also won the heart of Yuan Yuan. This nice couple is inseparable. We hope they will have offspring in Taiwan. It is proven that as long as there is love, the giant panda family will have a bright future. The marriage of Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan kept the nursery experts busy, and panda fans all over China were excited about it. They thought of many names for these two panda babies, just like names for their own children. The name Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan were finally chosen by the vast votes of more than 100 million people. Hundreds of volunteers came to the Wulong base to do their share to protect the pandas. The giant panda is no longer just a zoological species, but also a member of the local community. Protection of the pandas is rooted in the community. Residents of the area unite to help lost pandas to return to mountains and forests. Habitat preservation and construction development were carried out simultaneously, and the Giant Panda Museum was established 
the first museum built with a single species as its theme. People in the town ceased deforestation and land development in order to create a good living environment for the giant pandas, which has also brought unexpected benefits for the small town. More than 1,000 tourists visit the Wolong base each day. Restaurants and food and beverage outlets have become emerging local industries. During the busy tourism season, the turnover of a restaurant each day may reach more than 10,000 yuan. Besides restaurants, there are many signboards for local specialties, such as wild mushrooms located on both sides of highways. Earnings from tourism in Wolong in 2007 rose to 70 million yuan. It turns out that human beings can coexist and cooperate with other species to create a win-win situation. From then on, the giant pandas not only represented China, but also came to symbolize friendship and peace. In 1961, the panda was chosen as the symbol of Worldwide Fund for Nature. In the 1970s, the panda became a cultural ambassador and represented China by visiting America, Japan, and other countries to carry out international diplomacy and consolidate relationships. At that time, giant pandas were given to other countries as gifts. After the giant panda was listed as an endangered animal in the Washington Convention, it was thus prohibited from being presented to other countries as a gift. China then began to lease pandas to zoos around the world for a term of 10 years, and cubs born in other countries still belong to China. In the 19th century, Western people could only get to know pandas by panda fur pelts. In 1936, the first living panda was passed off as a puppy and smuggled into San Francisco. The panda became the main character in the book, which aroused people's curiosity. The Giant Panda Diplomacy Corps has reached Asia, America, and Europe and taken the responsibility of building good neighborly relationships and carrying on the family line. The giant panda became the brightest star when arriving at zoos around the world, causing a frenzy among the local people and bringing tourists and business to these zoos. However, it is expensive for zoos to keep these superstars. Take zoos in America, for example. To rent a pair of pandas from China, the zoos have to pay $1 million each year. In addition, with the essential expenditures to properly take care of the panda, the zoos have to find funding to ease their economic burden. China makes a profit of $7 million every year from the 13 pandas rented to America. No wonder the panda is considered a mascot. Another name for the panda is Pisho. In Chinese mythology, the Pisho is a divine animal with a dragon's head, a horse's body, and Kailin's feet, and it looks like a lion. It has great magic power and brings in wealth and treasure. In terms of shape, pandas are very different from the mythological Pichou. 
However, when it comes to the power of creating treasure, the panda is as worthy of the name as the divine beast. So, it makes a lot of sense to compare the panda to a pea show. It costs the wildlife protection organizations of China 5 million yuan every year for each wild panda. That amount, multiplied more than 1,000 wild pandas, brings financial challenges in doing nursery works. Economic benefits and diplomacy are only secondary interests for nursery workers. Their ultimate wish is that giant pandas can return to their natural habitat and survive and regain their productive capacity in the natural environment. On April 28, 2006, the first wildness-trained captive panda, Xiangxiang, was sent back to the wild with the blessing of experts and feeders. Seeing Xiangxiang walk into the mountains, the feeder who worked as its caregiver for many years could not stop crying. When the experts decided to carry out this program of returning pandas to the wild, Xiangxiang was selected for his superior survival capacity. After three years of wild survival training, Xiangxiang learned the skills of nidification and foraging, and also learned to mark its territory and expel intruders. Xiangxiang survived through blizzards in the Chonglai Mountains and safely crossed the wild land with snow accumulation of 20 to 30 centimeters in the severe winter with the temperature dozens of degrees below zero. However, relatively powerless Xiangxiang fell down from a high place in a territory while fighting to find food and died from severe internal injuries in less than one year. This sorrowful death also indicated the failure of the program to return captive giant pandas to the wild. The experts learned from this painful experience. They did not give up hope. Returning captive giant pandas to the wild to breed naturally with wild pandas to propagate the species is both inevitable and necessary in the future. One year later, nature brought an even harsher challenge to the Wulong base. On May 12, 2008, an eight-magnitude earthquake caused serious fatalities and damage in Wenchuan County of Sichuan Province, where the Wulong Reserve is located. The Wulong base was badly damaged in the earthquake. Many of the workers at the base were earthquake victims, but they dedicated themselves to the placement of giant pandas in another safe habitat, ignoring their family's safety with great regret. The once tranquil scene became a cherished memory of the past. Captive giant pandas were sent to Ya'an and Chengdu and Sichuan, Fujian and Guangzhou provinces. Although the reconstruction of the Wulong base will be a difficult task, the experts will rise to the challenge. Love and donations to help the giant pandas were sent to the disaster area from all over the world. Ruthless natural disaster made the brotherly love of the country even more important. For decades, the Wulong base did an excellent job of demonstrating man's love for nature. Although the scenery in Wulong is now changed, the legend of humans and pandas will live on forever.